Hi guys, welcome back to our Shuddy Vlogs, welcome back to another season review video, this time it's the turn of, yeah that's right, it's St. Patrick's Athletic, you might have guessed that, Keno what's up? How are you bud, are we? Grad, not a bother, see you're uh, sporting the new gear anyway. Oh yeah, it's not bad in fairness the gear this yeah. year, I have to say. That, that one's nice now I have to say, I'm still deciding but yeah that one's, I like that one I have to say. <laughs> I suppose we'll get into the start of the season, the expectations you might have had for Pats uh, before a ball was kicked. Obviously, the previous season was a half season and um, look, they were up and down. So what were your expectations coming into it? Yeah, for me, it's always Europe, you know. Just Europe is the main aim. Uh, it's very hard to get into Europe after being out of it. Once you fall out of that European, once you fall out of that European three or four, it's very hard to go back into it, break back into it. Mm-hmm. I think it was helped in terms of Bowes having a bad season and Dundalk also having a bad season. Definitely, look, it helped us, but I think Pat Step fully deserved it in the end. But, you know, uh, Europe is always the bonus, for, or always the goal for Pats. Anything more than that is a bonus. You always say a cup run, whether that's a semi final or something like that. But, you know, you always say a cup run is always good as well. So you always, you always look for Europe and a cup run. And I think it'll be the same next year. Yeah, the first half of the season, obviously, or the first, say, nine games, would say Pats um, were right in there with Chamber Rovers. They don't, I think they conceded three goals in nine games as well, which is very impressive. They obviously had everyone fit at that point as well. Um, do you think that that laid the foundation for the season? Did you feel at that point, after the first nine games, that they were going to be in amongst us in terms of Europe anyway? Yeah, look, you have to, you have to start well in the league. You know, you can't... You can't start playing after ten games, you know, and you, you can't you can't delay yourself in this league. You have to be right at it from game one. Uh, we've seen teams like Sligo and stuff like that that were smack at it and then probably fell off. But I think it's better to start well in this league than finish well for some reason. I just think you know you can kind of get away with it a little bit more. I don't know why that is, but mm. I, I think it's important to start well and. Look, I remember going right back to the very first game, played Rovers. Probably, like I said, our expectations were Europe. We're not going to be looking to get anything off Shamrock Rovers or get anything. At the start of the season, you'd be saying, well, we're probably, we're not going to be putting ourselves up trying to get points off Shamrock Rovers and Dundalk and all. You know, we're, they're not the points that we should be winning. You know, we, we, we're looking for the games, the other games with the teams in the round, there's your Sligos, your Bowls, your Derrys. You know, obviously you have to beat, you know, your other games, your Longfords, your Dr- there's your Harps, all them games as well. But, you know, we thought it was really going to come down to the key battles between ourselves, Bowls and Sligo. I didn't think Derry were going to be anywhere near it. Uh, so we went in there with a free hit, you know, and a fairness to us, the first game of the season, all last year in the 18 game season, we were the only team to really put it up to Rovers as well. So, you know, we're going in quickly. I wouldn't say confident, but you know, knowing our ability and knowing that we can hold them if we do get at them. Uh, very poor game. I actually only watched the back. Uh, I was flicking through the flicking through the the old uh, what they call a NTL box, flicking through and going through a couple of games I had recorded. So, I was just having <laughs> a look. Uh, poor game again that night. But, you know, we got one chance. And I think that was the thing with Pats early on the season. Mm. We were clinical. We only had one or two chances in the game. Mm. Like, you think back at that, right at the start of the season, we only had two two or three chances. Again, well, we obviously only had one chance again for overs. We took it. You know, uh, it well, was an another one like that. Daily yeah. meant a little bit. Balls, you know, you look at the at the time. Uh, a late goal, you know, and... We were very clinical, you know. We even done dark away a few weeks after that, you know. Sam Bound scored, but then we held on to their life at the end in the game of two halves. But you know, we were very clinical then in them early stages, and that's something that we created less chances, but we were mm. clinical. And then towards the back end of the season, we created more chances, but weren't clinical for some reason. It's just it's mad how it worked, but like you know, the expectations at the start were. Mm. Probably you're looking at Dundalk with all the money they brought in, all the team. You can't you can't compete, you know, and that's the way it is. And even next year, Pats aren't gonna compete with Rovers, Dirty, you know, Dundalk, you know, we're not gonna compete. We're not a club that spend over me. And so, you know, I think Pats fans know Europe was always the aim. 
uh, if you can break into it. Bear in mind, we haven't been in it. I know we were in Europe in 2019, but we actually didn't qualify for it. Mm. So we haven't been in Europe since yeah. 2016. So it's a long time, you know. So getting Europe was unbelievable this year, you know, because it's, like I says, once you fall out of it, I think Bowles might struggle next year in terms of getting trying to get back into that European European group, and you know, so it's it was a it was a good season on that end. Yeah, I suppose the second half of the season, the kind of good results and kind of dodgy results and injuries came into it from the usual crack, you know, when you've a kind of a small squad as well because they did have a small squad. But um, I suppose later on in the season, some young players started to emerge. Obviously, the likes of Dara Burns and that at Banquet was coming into the, to the team as well. And, um, you know, as I said, they started to emerge and perform very well, didn't they, those young players? Yeah, look, we had the, probably the smallest squad in the league, if, I, if I'm being honest. I, think, I don't think any team had a smaller squad than us. The academy is unbelievable at this club, and it's very exciting. I was only saying to you earlier on, like, I would be, like, obviously, Robbie's just had to sign up for uh, Dundalk and look I'm not devastated about it at all we've, we've Ben McCormick there we've Keane Corbley we've Adam Murphy who for me Adam Murphy is probably one of the one of the best players in the league he can be he has the potential for it he's like to be honest with you I mean this I think he pisses all over Ross Tierney in terms of how he plays and how good he is like I, I really rate this fella very highly he's been unlucky with injuries Yeah, and I think if he, if he didn't have the injury this year I think he would have been in the side. And, uh, you know, obviously he played in the youth league and done really well as well. So, mm. you know, we've some really good young players, but that's that was down to the club. You know, Stevie obviously played them and stuff like that. I get that. But that was down to the club and Garrett. You know, Garrett wants an academy, but he wants an effective academy. He doesn't want an academy, for example, where, you know, we're bringing these players in. And they're not playing for us, you know. What what's the point of bringing them in at 12, 13 years of age, walking them right through the age system, and they're not breaking in? Mm. You know, like you, you look back at all the all the contracts, you know, even young Josh Keeley getting a run out and stuff like that. It's you know, it's it's so positive in the club, and I I'm positive. I, I'm really positive about the future of the Pats. I think we're in good hands. Look whether Derek goes to Hibbs, which is the talk at the minute and stuff like that. Brilliant, I'm delighted for him. He's a Pats fella, you know. We 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 nurtured him into a Pats player. He's gone on and done it, but you know that's grand. Derek can go, but we've we've more players in to take his place. We you know we don't need to go out and we don't need to buy these, let's say, mega players in the league. You know that are on multi thousand contracts a year or whatever it is. We don't need it. We have these players. They're our players. The academy of Pats works tirelessly to get them in. And I think this year is the first year, I think, yeah. that people are really mm. seeing the Pats Academy. You mm. know, and it's just great to have a club. You know, for so long we've just been a team. But I think this year showed we have a club. Like James at Banquet. Just I can't I can't stop talking about him. Like I, I watched the cup final back last night and <laughs> uh, for about the twelfth time. But if you look an extra time, I don't know if you remember this. Yeah. I didn't see it at the time. But he actually, the uh, balls were on the counter ch- coming down our pads, and James the banker stepped up mm. and caught him off. So it's just after the halfway yeah. line. Mm. No, I actually cool. remember that as well. It was um, just clever play, as you say. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like that's some balls. That's not mm. even clever play, you know. Mm. In a cup final, the easiest thing to do was to drop off, mm. try, and, try and show him out wide, and try, wait till we get bodies in behind. Mm. But he had a bit of balls about him, and he was excellent. But, you know, Luca says, I think the credit has to go to Gareth for all that. Obviously, Stevie as well, because what he's done and what he's brought them through, and he's played them. He's given them chances, you know, and like mm-hmm. King Corbley, uh, next season for me is a big one. Adam Murphy, like I said, you know, these two, James Abanqua, I'd give him the number four jersey next year, mm-hmm. and I'd play him, let him be the main centre half, if, if that's the case, mm-hmm. because he's that good. You know, and we, we have such a conveyor belt of players coming through. And, you know, obviously you're going to miss a few. You know, there's going to be a few decent players that are probably going to have to head off elsewhere. But, you know, it's excellent to see. And, like I said, I'm positive. But this year was the first year I've seen a real academy come to come to fruition. Like. Yeah, absolutely. And, obviously, Pat's won the cuff, as we all know. And uh, I'm just trying to take back of some of the games there. But um, at what point... 
When did you think Pats could potentially have a genuine good chance of winning this cup? Was there a point where you kind of went? As stupid as it sounds, I, I didn't think we were going to win the cup, of course. You know, you always hope for a cup. You, you could win the cup, but yeah, exactly. Uh, Cork away. Mm. When we mm. won it on penalties. I, I, there was something about that game that I really felt. I said it to you after, actually. Mm-hmm. You know, I said we're going all the way this year. There was no doubt about it. Uh, in my opinion, look, that was a dodgy. I just remember that game it was a dodgy one because it was at the stage where we're missing loads of defenders as well. No offense to Cork or anything, but we had the uh, Pats were playing a better side that could have been in trouble in that particular match. You know, we had V and Gaul who had an unbelievable night, probably one of his busiest nights in a pad short. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had. We 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 played with Jay McClellan left full. Mm. Went with a banquet mm. centre half with Jamie Lennon at one stage as well. Mm. Played in there that game. Mm. Uh, we had who do we have? We fought Sam. Ba- no, oh, Sam played right back. Was it? No, Sam Baum was suspended. Hickman, I think Hickman played. Oh, right it was Hickman, yeah. yeah. And then and then you go. We had to bring on Griffin with sixty minutes to go in this yeah. first. In yeah. his fourth game back in a long time. You know, at that James point, the banquet hadn't played, I don't know, maybe one or two max games as well. And I he's coming into a disorganised defence. Like, came huh? on against Derry a few weeks beforehand when we went out, when Jamie Lennon got sent off and a banquet came in and played at Roy Full for the last couple of minutes. But that's, you know, it just shows you, though, that mm. he wasn't afraid to put them in. Mm. You know, you had Jamie Lennon, obviously, who ended up playing centre half. Uh, you know, you look in the middle, Ben McCormick, he gave him a chance in that game. He came on, he won us the penalty. Yeah, he scored. we think that's it. It's court, it's great. They go down and score, and it should be showed a massive character to go back into the game with such a deplete, depleted squad. And then to win it on penalties, Jay McClellan's penalties, he only took two for us, and he, yeah, mm. Mm. exactly. That, like that's the moment that I really thought that to get know, giddy. We could do something here. That was on the second round, I think, as well. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, at first, there's not many rounds. Like, yeah. You know, but, I know, yeah. You know, we played Wexford as well. And, you know, you get down to 10 men at home mm-hmm. after about five minutes. And you're like, oh, shit. Here we go. But, you know, we regrouped. That cup run was so special, I think. Like, that semi-final in Richmond will live long in my memories. Uh, oh, my it took there with Elfsberg for me. Elfsberg. The league win against Sligo, uh, you know, and then and then I put the cup up there as well. The semi final, mm. that was such a like. The semi final we, seemed more like that than the final for some weird reason. I don't know why. I don't know about you. Oh, I just weird. I know I know we weren't losing that final or that semi final. Yeah. Uh, I knew it. I just I had that feeling we weren't. You know, we had to show character as well. Mm. Again, James a banquet. You know, yeah. but Jack Hickman yeah. coming on. You know, we'd such a young side. We, yes, you know, we had we had a really young side again. And this is what I'm saying. I, I showed serious balls from the club to be putting these players in. And in these big games, Dara Bones, who obviously yeah. took the piss at times against Dundalk, you know, and the little chip at the end, the little dinky <laughs> one. And look, uh, it, it was great. You know, it's great to see the Matty Smith goal, the pass. For me, that game will live long in my memories as one of the best nights in Richmond. There was such a carnival atmosphere. It wasn't like we were going to lose, you know. And that, for some reason, we kind of, we had to get through the game. There was a lot of nerves and there was a lot of tension. It's the first time, probably, probably since about 2012, mm. 20, sorry, 2013, since I've seen a good as a crowd in Richmond, probably since we won the league against Sligo. And it was great to see that crowd back. And uh, look, I, I'd, I'd urge everyone to try and get back for the first game of the season next year. You know, and really? it, it's going to be a, it's going to be an, another good season. But we need to get mm. people on the seats. We need to get that crowd back. Our home form has been unbelievable this season. Uh, like I've, it's been a long time, and I know it was in the plans. And Stevie says all this in in, in the last. Like when he's come in, we want to make Richmond the fortress. All these phrases that every manager uses. Exactly. Yeah. And you know, he, every manager uses these. But in fairness to Stevie, I have to give it to him. He back. He 
whatever he said from day one, he backed her all up. I know he's got a nail car, so people would be looking at this probably cursing them. Mm. And I, I get that. So we can only fun. talk about we can only talk about the season. To be fair, like you know, look, it's, it's a it's a it's emotional. Emotions are running high. Mm. You've just won a cup. You obviously lost your manager. You're losing a couple of our key players up there as well. So you know it's not ideal. But since Stevie came in, in fairness to him, he he has changed the culture. He has changed the club. And to be fair to him, like. If if I was if someone told me two years ago or three years ago, for example, Stevie O'Donnell was coming in as manager, uh, you know, I I'd be I'd nearly laugh. But if I was offered, I was if I was told before two years mm. ago, he'll get us into Europe and win us the cup, and then we go back to Dundalk. Mm. I think you'd snap your hand off for it. You, you, know, you know, you you would, and uh, mm. like he left the club in such a fantastic state and now look I know people will be saying contracts issues stuff like mm-hmm. that I understand what you mean by that but I'm talking about the club as a whole like he lifted the club out of that out of that rut that we were in mm-hmm. uh, we just mm-hmm. hope he keep stay there now but look that's not that's not for Stevie to, like Stevie got us there mm-hmm. he obviously felt he wanted to move on uh, he's after moving on mm-hmm. we go again you know and we, we go again with a new manager and Tim, but like I says, he changed everything. He backed everything up that he said, and he gave us he gave us off for the club. I know he's gone now. People will be disappointed, but when the dust settles a little bit, you realise you got a second and won the cup. Yeah. I would have loved him to stay. Look, I'm, I'm, I'm as good as anyone because I felt that if we were here for another two years, we were winning the league title here. Mm-hmm. Uh, but look, I was I wasn't the big. We got with him, but like I says, when the dust settles, I, I still think people would be better towards Stevie. I know that, and people like you know I don't envy him on Richmond Park whenever we played him. But you know, and, and I, I get that, and I understand that because this is our club and it's emotional, and you know, you you're getting grossed into it. I get that, and I understand that the piece is I'm as good as anyone, you know, and I just I, I do think though. Like he gave everything when he was up at Yeah, well like, that's what I've said to a lot of people. Um, you know, you can't deny that he did do a good job. Like, and as I said, you said as well, he changed the dressing and culture and everything like that. That can't be denied. Uh, a lot of frustration, as you say, going into the future, but uh, that definitely can't be denied. Do you have to pick the best team performance of the season, Kino? What are you going with? Uh, there's been a couple. Uh, yeah. a couple of really good ones. Uh overall, you see, we played well and Passages in a lot of games, mm. you know, and we rode our look a lot in them without when we didn't have them good passages, like we mm. had to rely on V an awful lot. Mm. Uh, overall performances for me, I would I'd put down Cork in the cup, considering the side that we had out on the pitch, mm. you know, like you're missing Robbie Benson, Lee Desmond, Paddy Barrett, John Mountney. You know, you're missing all the Sam Bowen. <laughs> you know, Someone missing... else as well, I'm sure. I just can't take yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Was Matty Smith there? Uh, I don't think he was, actually. No. But there was a I load missing, yeah. But, you know, that one uh, really... Fairmo was missing as well. Yeah, that one really struck me. Uh, that, was a, that was a big performance needed there. Uh, we yeah. done it. We got through it. Obviously, the semi-final against Dundalk was a massive game. That was up there. Mm. Uh, mm. In terms of late games, though, I'm trying to think late games. You know, Dundalk away, yeah, just after they finished in Europe, was a big one. Uh, a good result, good win. We had, a, we had a couple of good games, you know. Away from home, it's hard to think back now. I'm trying to think. It is, actually. You know, I'm trying, trying, trying to think there on the top, on the top of my head. Good performances, you know. We, we we had a number of good ones at home. I think you could nearly pick five or six of our home games. Yeah. We were that good at home. It was a fortress. Mm-hmm. And at home early on the season, I know we scored late, but I thought they played lovely football at times in that match. Yeah, but we, you know, we. Mm. I don't know. I'm, I'm thinking dirty at home. I know it was down to two, ten men. But, no, but to control that game, yeah, it was one of the most yeah. controlling games of the season, even up to that uh, point. Ten men. One of course, I'm, go- I'm going to say the Dundalk semi-final. Oh, semi-final. Uh, I don't think the cup final is uh, 
you know, I don't think it was, oh, it was definitely, I, I wouldn't say it was Bowers' best or worst performance and the same with Pats. I don't think you it was know, a great game overall, to be honest. No, when you, look, when you tear it back, you. it wasn't a great game, actually, yeah. Mm. I said that to you, Keith. I says, look, I mm. says, this is going to be an anti climax. I did mm. say it. I knew it was going to be. Uh, I don't think it should be out of it. But, you know, it, it, it's great. To, it, it was great to finish her off. Mm. Absolutely. If you had to go worst team performances of the season, where what are you going for there? Yeah, we've had it. We have we've had a few. I would probably say the one there against Sligo towards the back end of the season mm. in Richmond. Mm. Uh, that was probably up there, but there's been very few far between. Mm. You know, uh, in Harps away, Harps away up there. Yeah, yeah, it probably would have been with Bermo left full, right full. Or, yeah, that was. <laughs> That was a bit of a mess. A uh, couple of dodgy decisions in that as well. But, uh, yeah, Harps away, probably. And then the slow go at home. Oh, you yeah. say. Uh, them two. Bowls away, actually. And they tore us a new house. 3-2. Yeah, uh, yeah. I don't know how it was 3-2. Don't ask me how yeah, it was. We kind of... Uh, we... Tr- Bowls tried to throw it away, I think. Okay, that was the game I was in hospital. I was looking out at the floodlights. Oh, fuck, yeah, that's right, shit. Yeah. I, was looking, I was looking out on the floodlights. Or, or daily I was filming, I couldn't be there. But, uh, Thank God you weren't in the end. <laughs> yeah, I was watching it, but yeah. I, have to, I have to say, that was probably up there as well. Yeah. The, yeah. You know, but there have been very few and far between. You asked me last year or the year before, I could list out 12 or 13 of them, you know. In a 19-game season. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, exactly. You know, but it's it's great. It's great to be able to talk about the ones, twos, or trades of the bad results, you know, and yeah. the bad performances. But you know, a bit of disappointment in the league, considering the games against Rovers. You know, a, a little bit disappointed, mm. especially you know, obviously you got one nil up in Tallaght, mm. five minutes ago, something like that. Mm. Paddy Barra goes off injured. Sam gets caught cold. Go, mm. you know, and. Mm. That's couple a couple of late goals against Rovers, yeah. That's a Andrew. massive one. Yeah. Then obviously we played him on Richmond. Lee makes a, a mistake, which was probably his first mistake in about four years for the yeah, yeah. And you know, Mandrew goes in, pounces and scores. Now people will flip it and say that's the sign of a good team in Rovers. We get that. But then, but then you look at you know, up to open Tallow, which we have a little bit of regret about that game. You know, mm. we were never in the game, but you go in a half time one all. Mm. And you know you get a bit of luck with a deflected shot, wasn't it? And that wasn't. The it was Mount me took a free kick and a deflected. Yeah, it was a free, yes, yeah. Was it deflected? Yeah. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Yeah, and there was a bit of luck about it. Like I said, he either wrong footed them or deflected them. I remember mm. it. Mm. And then you know we're going in there one all, and then you know we were never in the game, but we played mm. Robbie Benson as a false nine. They actually time. played that box midfield that they, funnily enough, played in the cup final, which I thought was a little bit risky. But look. That's the way they played that day, yeah. And then towards the back end of the season, of course, we played Rovers and now Melvin Lambert with the own goal and the last kick of the game. Look, I think we had to win that game in any way. Mm. A draw didn't do us any good. And a draw I probably would in that game, actually. I probably would have liked to seen us go for it a little bit more, I think. Like, we kind of put on the brakes a little bit, didn't we, in that game? Look, a draw didn't do us any good. No, so no. It doesn't matter in terms of the own goal. No. So, no. If you were to add all them points up, mm. you know, against Rovers and take them away, we probably were up there with a chance, you know. Mm. I, I strongly believe, obviously, our second, our last six, seven games or whatever it was in the league mm. would have been an awful lot better. Yeah. If we had, a, uh, if we had the league yeah. to go at. So, you know, I, I, don't, I wouldn't say... I don't think they played their best 11 in the last five matches, like, at yeah. all. That's it, and... You know that that was that's a little bit of regret for me, but that's it me being yeah. brave because I said at the start of the season I'll, I'll point your hand off or you'll point, you know, whatever it takes. I think, I think we did mention the cup a little bit, and we thought oh, that might be a bit greedy. <laughs> yeah. Like honestly, the cup Europe was, and the cup. <laughs> what 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 a game that cup final was! What an occasion! Mm. I'll probably never see Pats play in front of a crowd that big again. I you hope that's the aim. You hope that's the benchmark now to get people out. What 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 kills me though? The cup we had twenty seven thousand people there, mm. and all the kids that are mm. fresh in their memories of Pats and Bowles or whoever, whether they're Bowles fans or Pats fans, it's fresh in their memory. They can't wait to get down to Daly Mount. They can't wait to get down to Richmond. 
by the time February comes around again, that bus was gone. Yeah, you know, a little bit. Yeah, you yeah. know, you, like you need to catch them while they talk. You know, you need Great to impose them while they talk. Which yeah, is, that's great. You have the new ones in, do with two or three game, league games to go, get their two or three league games in after that. Like, because a lot of new yeah. people go to those games. Like, and yeah. as you said, you do catch the bug, not only kids, but adults as well. Yeah, look, you know, and I think the clubs have done really well. I don't I think, don't think Bowles brought their season tickets out before the final, but I think Pat's no. done a really good thing in bringing their season ticket out mm. the night before the cup final or the yeah. Friday before the cup final yeah. in terms of. You know, obviously it helps if you win the final and the numbers will probably go up a little bit. But, you know, the kids now are saying, oh, we want to see this every week. And that's a Christmas present sort of then. There's your season ticket. You know, and it, it's great like that. But what an occasion. When, like, obviously, I'd be forever thankful to Stephen, Alan, Padge, all the all the team. They've given me some of the best memories of my life. You know, the best couple of days. Like I says, <laughs> I went there in 2014. And... You kind of expect it to Looking be for granted. Like, but the best team in the country at that minute in time. That that you know, mm. I know Dundalk won that league, but Pat's squad was unbelievable that year. And you know, you kind of expect to be in the cup, in and around the cup, and in and around the league every year when you are when you have a squad that good. But I don't think we had the right to be there this year. Mm. Uh, yeah, I think that squad. Let's be honest. I think that squad was much stronger than this squad. To be perfectly. Oh honest. yeah. Yeah. Look, I absolutely, I loved it. I, I honestly, I, I really soaked it in. I promised myself that if we ever got to a cup final again, I'd soak everything in, and I'd really enjoy it. For once, I enjoyed the occasion. I wasn't nervous. I wasn't shit myself. When the penals were coming on, obviously, <laughs> hard a little bit. And you know, you don't want to lose on penals. No. Uh, I think we spoke about that even before in one of the preview of the game or something. I don't want to lose on penalties. You know, and you look, we were out of luck in that final. There's, an absolute, there's no question about it. We're not, we're not saying we went down. Well, I think we were the better team. Yeah, but... I think, I think the, the, the first or goal, I know we said the occasion was good and the game was bad, but that, you see World Cup finals and games can be bad as well, but that first or goal really lit up the game and Ophelia scored after. But even so, it was, you look back, people, even neutrals will look back I don't know, next year, whatever, the year after, whatever, that Forrester goal. So at least there was something there as well that really yeah, played look, into the I final. Mean, it's, it's great, you know. and It was it was great to obviously win it and stuff. But, you know, it was a good occasion. Like I said, you, you, you find it hard if you lost on penalties. I'd say Bowles, it feels, ah, yeah. it'd be sickening for them. And I, I do, I feel that. I've never lost on penalties. I've never lost a cup final on penalties. But I know what it's like to lose a cup final and it's not nice. Uh on penals, I could only imagine. But, uh, like, it was just, it was the occasion around it, the team. That team has given us everything. Mm. That team has given us a club to be proud of. Mm. As Pats fans, we're always proud of our club. Mm. You know, mm. even when we're not doing well, we're still doing something right in the community or we're doing something right around the club. You know, you, you never feel disconnected with the club. There's never that there. So, I, I wouldn't know what that, you know... Maybe for a couple of years, a year or so, 2017, there was kind of a little bit of tension, you would say, or whatever. Mm-hmm. But you never felt disconnected as as such. But I think this year is something that I think every fan felt part of it. And, you know, you felt part of this journey. You felt part of this team, the fans. The, some of the, like them players are absolutely adored this year. Mm-hmm. You know, they were, abs- they were loved. They were loved to bits. And, you know, you, you don't often see that, but every player was absolutely adored. And, you know, people will probably be looking at the Iwoko sign and as, you know, maybe we could have brought another striker in, for example. Uh, mm. I don't think we missed the striker as such towards the back end then. I think Matty Smith really stepped up. I think no, I think that Burn smith king combo was working quite well. But I suppose it meant if you're missing one of them, there was a bit of a struggle there. Yeah, and then look... Uh, going back just off the top of my head there we lost the game 1-0 but going back one of the best games 30 away so yeah that, that was the best defeat of the season <laughs> free flowing football attacking oh, yeah. I couldn't believe what I was watching uh, obviously we lost the game 1-0 but you know I have to say now it was uh, like it was very enjoyable season winning mm. the cup I'll be forever thankful of the players I was only saying earlier, they're on to yourself, Keith. Like, 
it's tough because I get to know the players on a personal level. You know, I I, I know them. I speak to them daily. I, I talk to them. I, you know, I, I feel part of the bubble. Like I try and, you know, and it's tough when you see players leaving because yeah, no, they're yeah. not just they're not just a player that plays to your team. You know, you got to know them yeah. personally. You know yeah. that you know that family. You know everything about them. You know that kids. You know, you know stuff like that. You're out, you're out, and you see them out, and you're, you're stopping and talking to them. You're going out for dinner, whatever it is. You know what I mean? You, it's 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 a it's a family club that way. I think, and a lot of players, like a lot of all the families, go to the games. For example, Bremo. You know, you look captain fantastic. Like, ah, oh, that's for another. Day. We have to do yeah. Bremo. Thirteen I seasons as well, but I think we'll end there anyway, guys. So brilliant stuff, Keno. Absolutely fantastic, guys. Thanks for watching. Uh, let us know what you think of the season in the comments. Um, subscribe to the channel. Hit your bell notification button. Cheers.